As with many great stories, Facilitator's story starts at the end. But with how long of a history the former number one predator has with cheating, with the allegations, the accusations, and previous bans, there is way more than meets the eye. The story of Facilitator is not the first, and will definitely not be the last, of someone who thought they were untouchable, but eventually flew too close to the sun and got themselves banned. And today we're going to go over just that, starting at the very beginning, and go over every Every single event that made Facilitator one of the most hated players in Apex history. But in order to do so, we have to go back. Facilitator initially made his debut into the Apex Legends scene on console around Season 3 and 6 in the, at the time, separated Xbox lobbies. Alongside his friend Dusty Schmidt, who would later be known as Invulnerable, and a few other notable names that you might recognize, such as Skittlecakes and Xenoa, Facilitator managed to climb his way into one of the top-ranking Predators, but not in the way that you might initially expect. Because all of these names that I just threw at you were part of two different feuding friend groups, who were in competition to gain the prestigious rank of number one predator. The first group consisting of Nida Soda and his friends, of which included Invulnerable and allegedly Facilitator, were blatantly teaming in ranked, allowing each other to become the top two teams, shooting at each other and trading kills, and then finally allowing Nida Soda to get the win. Sinoa and Skittlecakes, two members of the other group, who were actually grinding to become the number one predators through legit means, couldn't keep up, and eventually ended up teaming and six-manning themselves just to have a chance to compete. And as you can see in this clip, they really took it to the next level. So in this clip you can see that they're clearly teaming, and in the kill feed Nita Soda's name pops up. These guys clearly don't care if anyone's spectating. They don't even make it seem like they're not teaming. You can see them clearly farming on each other, farming damage. So they even put two Gibby domes on each other. At this point, I don't even think they care if they get banned or not. The beef between these two friend groups ending up making console ranked unplayable for so many seasons straight, because as soon as you get into the higher ranks, odds are you're gonna face off against either of these two groups, rigging and trading their own games. And since they were playing for over 12 hours a day, the odds of this happening was pretty likely. Eventually, this eternal struggle ended up making it into mainstream gaming news, getting coverage from the likes of VG24 and Dixerto, with the whole subject eventually catching the eye of the Apex Legends developers themselves, who made a bit of a nothing burger of a response, saying that once they've concluded appropriate investigations, they would take the, what they called, appropriate action. But after this climax, we never really heard anything about the wind traders, because there was no official word about the so-called appropriate actions. And it didn't seem like anyone talked about the situation afterwards either. Either. According to Kazi, who is my source for most of the lore part of this video, and obviously I'll link his stuff in the description if you are interested, there were rumors floating around that the former wind traders were all reset to bruns, and some of the rumors that they were banned, but there was never anything concrete showing us that a rank reset or ban actually happened. After the whole console wind trading era concluded, and allegedly because all of the wind traders got banned, Invulnerable and Facilitator eventually ended up switching to PC, and by their first season on PC, both of them had managed to find themselves in the top of the Predator ladder again, with Facilitator hovering around the second and third Predator slot, and Invulnerable staying slightly behind. In fact, Facilitator ended up building a reputation and actually a bit of a name for himself, playing with other well-known community figures such as Monsoon, Prodigy Aces, Noct, and a lot more pros and streamers that we all know and love today. But with the fame came the hate, with some commenters in the Apex community continuing to bring up their shady history of win trading and six manning, in turn raising some suspicion about their newly found success. But other than the typical slightly suspicious clips floating around, nothing really made the mainstream which would get facilitator banned anytime later down the line. But that doesn't mean that Respawn wasn't onto them, because not too long after making a debut in the Apex Legends ranked, Invertible and Facilitator were both banned from Apex Legends. Invernoble catching the ban for what many, including Kossi, speculated to be a soft aimbot, which in short is an aimbot that bends the bullets for you, and with many pros and ranked grinders being sure that he was wall hacking as well, and Facilitator at the time presumably getting banned for cheating as well, as there were many accusations of him using something called a strike pack, which is an add-on that allows you to completely remove recoil on controller, were floating around. Despite these claims, Facilitator initially denied that he got banned on Twitter, 
but we didn't really see anything of him for a while after that. In a roundabout way, the ban was later confirmed by Respawn's own hideouts, who in typical hideouts fashion, tweeted a hammer emoji followed by an X2, to show that the security team just banned two more players. But wait, as you can probably tell, this tweet was made all the way back in 2021, and the facilitator ban was on August 23rd, 2023, so what's up with that? You guessed it, this story is just getting started. In August 2022, a year and a half later, his Watson posted this screenshot on his own Twitter, which shows Facilitator not only being unbanned from Apex, but live streaming his games on Twitch as well, ending the tweet with thanks respawn for protecting cheaters which was just one of the many times his watson would get into direct fire against respawn and their security team in particular in his own career and by the way if you want to hear more about that i have made a video on that as well so you can check that out once you have the time and after his watson's post started making the rounds the head of said security team hideouts responded to this very tweet clarifying that facilitator was banned for playing with cheaters for an extended period of time not for using any cheats himself Meaning that, according to Hideout's facilitator, despite the community's speculation, either wasn't using a strike pack a year ago, or that Respawn didn't have evidence beyond a reasonable doubt of such. Hideout closed the response with that it's been over a year since they have seen them, and if they are reformed, they are welcome back. Ending with a response to the end of his Watson's initial tweet, that they will monitor facilitator and that they do not protect cheaters. Nothing really happened after that, so now we're gonna skip on ahead another year, to, again, August in 2023. It's weird how these large events kept happening around August, and you can really only guess as to why, but anyways, with the new rank system coming out, Facilitator was back on the grind, hungrier than ever, and in Season 18, he managed to make his way all the way to the number one predator spot, but with the implications of his history hanging over his head, many doubted the legitimacy of this achievement, and as he amassed an increasing amount of viewers, suspect moments started to be noticed, they started to be clipped, and they started to be called out. Not too long after reaching number one Predator, actually, wow, the same day that he hit Predator, screenshots of Facilitator being on top of the leaderboard started circulating, with his Watson spearheading a movement with a tweet sarcastically stating that while the current top Predator had been caught cheating three times before, surely he wasn't cheating the fourth time. Following his initial tweet, clips started surfacing of some pretty suspect moments, with his Watson himself posting the two most egregious and the most reasons to the same Twitter thread. The first clip shows Facilitator entering a room and pre-firing into a wall, seemingly for no reason, expecting an enemy to be standing right there. But it turns out that the enemy Loba actually was on the other side of that very wall, leading to Facilitator turning back around the door to pre-peek and pre-fire her as she comes around the corner. And on its own, you could say this is all you need to get someone banned, but smoking gun aside, any normal person, you know, without wall hacks, would open the same door and look straight forward towards the stairs, instead of right into a wall. And it doesn't make sense how Facilitator, the supposed number one predator in the game, didn't notice the Revenant who was blatantly sticking out from behind the Loba. I mean, his ult was up. While some commenters have tried disproving this clip as a former number one predator didn't notice the enemy who was hiding behind the knockdown shield, one theory is that maybe he saw both players behind the shield and saw that one of them was knocked. Either way, you can't explain him trying to shoot a Loba who was behind a wall. Following the first tweet, his Watson also added another clip showcasing the same player healing up outside of zone, sliding down and for whatever reason deciding to open a bin from the other side. And I mean, who opens a bin like this? Especially in zone, you don't have time for this. All while conveniently staying in cover, just in case there was an enemy inside of the bins to the left, and then conveniently spotting the Pathfinder hiding inside of another bin, followed by one of the best acting performances that I've personally seen since, you know, The Room. Oh shit, he's on his bin. Oh. As hilarious as this is to watch, his Watson follows the clip up by reminding us why this matters in the same very thread. Being rank 1 Predator has a very real monetary value for streamers, with tons of streamers going from absolutely nobodies to getting hundreds, if not thousands of viewers from their rank performance alone. And by cheating, Facilitator is stealing money from the actual legit ranked grinders 
who deserve it. So cheating for a high rank isn't just about stolen valor, it's very often loss of income as well. All of these moments of cheating in his history, Facilitator ended up destroying the opportunity of countless of other streamers. One very obvious example being Prodigy Aces, who was the number one predator until Facilitator started cheating and took the spot away from him, taking the views away from him and eventually making him more or less quit streaming. And unlike in the previous year, thanks to his newly gained online presence, his Watson's Fred instantly took off. And the word of Facilitator once again being up to something shady started spreading. But this time around, Facilitator wasn't just playing with cheaters, he was the cheater. And on August 23rd, not even a day later mind you, Facilitator was banned live but not on his own stream, instead. This time around, we got to see a streamer get banned from a different person's point of view in a hilarious fashion. <laughs> Wait, he just got fans! He just got fans! <laughs> Whoa. What? Yo, he just actually got fans. The Apex community instantly blew up, talking about the ban, discussing his past, and with some even speculating that maybe this was a mistake. I mean, false bans have happened before. Come here, come with me and shoot. Um, uh, uh, ch chat, don't clip that. Careful. Okay. What just happened? Well, I got a life, uh, I got a fast heal. Uh, my game just kicked me. But Respawn quickly set the record straight, making a quick tweet on their main Twitter, stating that after thorough investigation and review, they have issued a number of bans and the cheating won't be tolerated. You could argue this wasn't related, but the timing is a little bit too close. In addition to that, in another tweet, Hideouts clarified that while Facilitator can still play and stream Apex, which he was at the time, he is not allowed to do anything else than join the firing range. This tweet, once again, doing a roundabout statement about the situation and confirming that yes, he was banned. And seeing this just makes me so giddy. And if you are feeling as giddy about it as I am, make sure to get some of that happy energy out by smashing that like button. And while some may want to Respawn to make an official statement calling the player himself out, they have historically always avoided to do just that, because dragging a player in that way could have serious legal repercussions, and if it ends up being a false ban, it could end up completely destroying their career as streamers or as pros. And now the facilitator finally is out of the community for good, members of the community are turning their eyes towards the players that he was with on his grind to the number one predator spot this time around, with his Watson going as far as to claim that even they deserve a ban, at the very least a ban of three months, for their involvement of playing with a cheater. And whether that's reasonable or not, I'll leave to you guys in the comments. Following the news, Facilitator seems to have taken the preemptive action of turning off replies to his Twitter, which to this day continues getting followers. He also accused Zane, you know, the guy who did this on LAN. Coming in from behind them, because there are a couple of teams in the vicinity, oh! as Zane shreds, and suddenly Urban gets hit to the floor. Oh my goodness, what are you doing to him, Zane? He finds two with the one clips, he's gonna make- To be a cheater as well. And in the middle of the night in his local time, he posted this very ominous tweet, followed by him getting absolutely cooked in the replies. But at the end of the day, it's like the old saying goes, once a cheater, always a cheater.